Namaskar! Welcome back to Tub Time International once again. Now, I know I'd stopped having these baths, but I've got a little issue. I've been dilating and I think I've overstretched a bit, a couple of little sore places. So I'm giving them a soak in salt baths for a couple of days, which should help them along. Uh, instead of using my largest dilator, which I've got myself to add a bit of extra stretch, I'll leave that one for this week and stick with working up only to the Priamid maximum size dilator which they were good enough to supply me with. So that should sort itself in a couple of days. Okay, so today on the subject of Priamed, I thought it might be useful to tell people what it'd be handy enough to be having with you when you go to Priamed for peritoneum pull through vaginoplasty surgery. Loads of knickers, pack loads of knickers you won't believe how many you're going to go through panty liners not such a big deal but you will need some with you and um, Priamed should help you out with that but it's always handy to have a few with you for those of you who haven't had electrolysis and lasers and things and need to shave take some shaving foam and some razors with you you will need these anyway because before you're up, they would like you to shave from your nipples to your knees. Everything, clean as a whistle. Personally, I did nose to toes, but that's up to you. You will also need a tablet, a Kindle, a book or something for your downtime. And oh yes, one thing that I discovered is very essential is an inflatable donut cushion you can get them on Amazon they don't cost much the reason I say the inflatable one is so you can adjust the firmness of it by letting the air out or pumping it up a bit higher it makes a real difference once you've had your op trust me you're also going to need some indoor shoes or slippers a pre-med they don't allow you to wear your outdoor shoes inside in fact a lot of places in India are like that so outdoor shoes wise I would suggest something that's easy to kick off and slip your feet into that will come in handy when you're going for tests and that sort of thing and Jane says when you get to pre-med leave your shoes and your dignity at the door you won't be needing either of them and she's absolutely right Okay, the next thing to take with you, clothing wise, loose fitting dresses that are really easy to take on and off. I had some loose fitting dresses that I could lower to the waist, exposing the breast area for x-rays at the hospital and also for the 2D, 3D, whatever it is, echo thing, the horrible test very uncomfortable I've mentioned it in a previous video and also it's very easy just to slip the whole thing off and on again without messing about you're also going to want something loose and comfortable for when you're lounging around the place and I found these loose fitting dresses were just the ticket and this one is up to yourself but I personally took deodorant with me it's just my paranoia. I, I love to wear deodorant every day. I have to. I also took makeup with me and the first chance I got, I put some makeup on. It really made a difference to my mental health when I was in the hospital to be able to put on a little bit of makeup and feel human again. Uh, take some nighties with you. You're going to be there for four weeks, remember. So take enough with you for that. Uh, Tissues, very useful, very useful, goes without saying. And if you can, take some rupees with you for shopping. There are so many wonderful things to be found on the markets. Make sure you have some rupees. Right, more importantly, 
stock up on these at home before you go to pre-med. Obviously, first off, make your arrangements with your employer or whatever your source of income is uh, to cover yourself for at least three months. That should cover any eventuality. Some people need longer, some people need less, but three months is a good figure. You're going to need seat pads for your dilation at home. Sometimes these are called incontinence pads. Uh, they're basically designed for putting on chairs or on beds for people who unfortunately have medical conditions and little leaks, but they're perfect for dilation and they're disposable. Panty liners. Personally, I use thin ones for daytime and thick ones for nighttime. Make sure you've got plenty. And stock up on at least three months worth of meds. Preferably six months, but three months worth. And save up enough money so you can be off work for at least three months. You don't want to be worrying and rushing back to work before you're ready. So make sure you've got enough funds in the bank and make sure you've squared things with your employer. You're also going to need water-based lube for your dilation. You must make sure this is paraben free. That's a preservative that can cause problems. You don't, you don't want problems. You're also going to need lots of baby wipes. Before dilation, I always clean myself thoroughly with baby wipes. And antibacterial liquid soap. Make sure it's perfume free, possibly with aloe vera, but that's your choice. The important thing is the minimum amount of additives in it you can possibly find. So I hope that's some use if you're thinking about visiting Priamed for the peritoneum pull through vaginoplasty. I do highly recommend it. And Priamed aftercare is second to none. Once you're back home, if you've got any problems or questions, just message them on the Facebook there and they'll get back to you. And they'll give you sound advice. That's all for now, TKR. I love you. Bye-bye.